In this section, we would like to consider a special type of LTI system. Although it's very special, it is also very, very, very useful. The LTI system that can be described by linear constant coefficient difference equation. Let's consider an LTI system whose input xn and output yn can be described by this equation. This is what we call linear constant coefficient difference equation and we have actually seen this equation earlier. The output yn is equal to b0 xn plus b1 xn minus 1 all the way to b m xn minus m for some integer m and minus a1 yn minus 1 all the way to a n y n minus n also for some integer n you may find the name linear constant coefficient difference equation to be similar to something that you have already learned before in continuous time what is that something linear constant coefficient differential equation that's a a type of system that you must have learned in classes such as um, signal and systems. And at this point, I would strongly urge you to refresh your memory about what, what you have learned about linear constant coefficient differential equation and go back and review the material. Many properties that we have learned about linear constant coefficient differential equations are, in continuous time are also true for linear constant coefficient difference equation for discrete time system. Why do we call it linear constant coefficient, constant coefficient difference equation? Because these b0, b1 to bm a1 to An, these are constant coefficients. Those are parameters of the system that are given to us. Now, if we would like to find the value of y in 0, the value of y when time is equal to n0, we can simply plug in the number n0 everywhere to this equation, then we can compute y n0. And this means if we know the value of xn0, xn0 minus 1 to xn0 minus m, and also the past value of y, n0 minus 1 to n0 minus n, these past values of y, these past value of x and the current value of x, then we can compute the current value at n0 of the output. An example, suppose this is our linear constant coefficient difference equation. It's a um, very simple one where all yn depends only on the past sample of y, the sample, be the sample before, and uh, also xn. And xn is delta n. And let's start to use this equation to compute the output for this input. For example, we start with y0. y0 is a y minus 1 plus x0. Oops, we don't have the value of a y minus 1. What would be y minus 1? What is the value of a y minus 1? Should it be 0? Because our x, the input comes in when n is equal to 0, right? So it seems reasonable that uh, y minus 1 is equal to 0, and for that matter, all the value of y before the input comes in is equal to 0. So yn is equal to 0 for all n smaller than 0. So let's plug in y minus 1 equal to 0, and x0 is equal to 1 because it's the impulse function. So y0 is equal to 1. 
And we can continue on with y1. It will be a y0 plus x1. And this is equal to a. y2 is a y1 plus x2. y1 is a. x2 is equal to 0 because x is 0 everywhere except at n equal to 0. So this is a squared. And we can continue on in this manner. And uh, we can guess the general form of yn. It will be a raised to the power n for all n greater or equal to zero and it's zero otherwise. Just now we mentioned that the output y should be zero before we have any input comes in and coming in. Now let's look at this question with more details. Consider the LTI system is satisfying the linear constant coefficient difference equation, like what we had. And uh, suppose we have an input xn, it's equal to zero for all n less than n zero. So the value of xn is equal to zero, 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 zero for all n before n zero. And after n zero, or at n zero, there may be some non-zero sample, but that's not our concern now. Does this imply that the output should also be zero for all n less than n zero. That means x has this property, it's zero before n zero, then y is also zero before n zero. Will this be true? For this, let's consider two cases. For the first case, xn is equal to zero. The input x1n is equal to zero for all n, okay? It's not just zero before n zero, it's zero, period. And uh, what will be the output at this time when we have an all zero input? Then the output should be just a zero, right? For all n. Now let's consider another input. x2. It's zero before n zero. Can we say the same thing about its output? y2 is a zero before n zero? We know y2 depends, y2n depends on y2n minus one, y2n minus all the way to y2n minus n. And x2n, x2n minus 1 to x2n minus n. But the inputs for of case 1 and case 2 are the same. They are identical for n less than n0. So we can expect the output should be the same for n less than n0. So indeed, the output y2 should be 0 before n0. And the answer to this question should be yes.